While it's been about two years since New York legalized marijuana, and even longer since cannabis could be sold in other forms in the Empire State, the landscape remains in flux as state regulators and lawmakers grapple with how to best proceed with retail sales of cannabis. For more on the future of the legal, regulated cannabis marketplace in New York, we're joined by State Senator Luis Sepulveda, a Bronx Democrat who carries legislation dealing with cannabis licenses and the sale of cannabis products. Welcome to the studio, Senator. Thank you. Great to be back. So you carry legislation to expand the scope of certain cannabis licenses. Can you explain what you're hoping to do? Sure. So one of the complaints that you receive in our communities is the that people are consuming marijuana out in public. Residents going to their homes, their apartments, their businesses, they smell the strong, pungent odor of marijuana. And we receive a lot of complaints about that. So I thought, you know, having traveled to Amsterdam, and, and this is not Amsterdam, New York. No, <laughs> no, Amsterdam. Because we'd love to have you upstate in Amsterdam, New York sometime. Well, I'll go there. We've got a bridge. That's, that's about it. <laughs> Amsterdam's but, wonderful, I should say, so no one's getting mad at me. It's a great place. But uh, Amsterdam has the smoke uh, cafes there where you can go and purchase marijuana, smoke it, uh, have coffee. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been in existence quite a long time. And that area, uh, when I visited, I saw that there was zero crime and the fact is that people would go there to socialize, listen to music, drink coffee, and stay within that area when they were consuming cannabis products. And I thought that to tackle some of these complaints that we receive in our community, let's create an environment, an area where people can go, they can consume marijuana products when they're performing music like a cafe as well. And if they want to consume cannabis products, they can do it there. It'd also be good for business. And it'll also be easier for law enforcement to deal with the issue of cannabis uh, consumption throughout the state. And would this be with places that sell cannabis as well, or would it be limited to just a license to smoke and consume marijuana there? We're thinking of places to consume right now. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, you can expand it to have these places sell, but the the legislation clearly says that it's on-site consumption. Uh, No vaping, uh, no gummies. It's really to create cafes and restaurants for people to safely consume their cannabis products. So, so do you envision it as the way we think about a bar today where you Absolutely. can just drink if you want, but you can also get food theoretically or do trivia or they've got music like you were just talking about? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's part of the concept and why I think it would be a boon for the restaurant cafe industry. I, I think it could revive some of these businesses. So we're thinking long term and, and I think uh, it's a bill that would make certainly a greater economic recovery and incentives for people in our communities. If the origin of the bill, though, was in response to concerns that people had about smoking outdoors, should a component of this bill as well be restrictions on public consumption of marijuana? Well, there are restrictions. I mean, if you see uh, the restrictions are almost mirror what you do with alcohol consumption and cigarette consumption. For example, you can't smoke marijuana in, in playground. You can't smoke near schools. You can't smoke near churches. But yeah, but whatever you can smoke a cigarette, though, you can basically smoke marijuana. That's correct. That's correct. But so should that be the case? Should there be restrictions on where you could smoke marijuana? Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. But should, should they be more restrictive, though, than cigarettes, for example? No, they should have the same restrictions. I mean, look, uh, marijuana doesn't cause cancer. Cigarettes do. Mm-hmm. So if there's a greater health risk of people uh, smoking in public, certainly the cigarette industry causes much more damage than the marijuana industry and the consumption of, of cannabis. But there certainly should be restrictions. I mean, I, d- I don't want anyone to be smoking marijuana where you have children in schools. So you have restrictions right now. Like many other restrictions, sometimes people don't follow it. Sometimes I've seen people smoking cigarettes in parks or drinking alcohol in parks. I'm shocked. <laughs> so, but we have to, you know, we have to create uh, an open commercial space where people can go and consume. And, and that's the, the thrust of my bill. Any concerns about secondhand smoke ramifications with a indoor smoking facility for marijuana? Because when we think about cigarettes, that's been one of the re- reasons why you really can't smoke indoors in public settings anymore. Most of the legal sales of marijuana the product is tested. It's tested for all kinds of compounds that people sometimes add. I mean, there was a study done recently where they found feces in some marijuana products. When you buy legally, these are tested by labs, and they provide a much uh, safer product. I don't know of any study, I could be wrong, that suggests that secondhand smoke from marijuana will cause cancer, or secondhand smoke will cause someone to get impact of THC. I, I yet to see that. I've heard... People joke about getting high, but I've yet to see any sort of research to support that that uh, 
that kind of concept. Gotcha. So this isn't the only area in the cannabis marketplace that you're focusing on. You've also been looking at uh, Delta 8 THC, which is, for lack of a better word, a variation of a, a hemp product that, if people utilize it, could theoretically get the same head high that they might get from marijuana. My understanding is that you're looking to make that something that can be legally sold in, in New York. How come? The marijuana industry caused a lot of damage to the community that I represent. There are people, many people who are arrested, have criminal records, uh, couldn't get scholarships, couldn't get certain jobs. And so the cannabis industry in and of itself will help some of these communities where people suffered a lot of the indignities and unfairness about marijuana policing, for lack of a better term. I want to create an environment where cannabis products, a derivative of cannabis, can be consumed safely. And people are going to use it anyway, so why not create an environment where it's tested and it's a lot safer? And so that's why we're also looking into that component of cannabis. And right now, do you feel like if there is going to be any changes to the cannabis marketplace broadly, that it's going to happen with individual bills, like what you're pushing, or is it more likely to be part of a larger omnibus later in the session or, or in the context of the budget? We're still in the infancy stage mm-hmm. of cannabis. Uh, just recently, we issued the first licenses. I know we've had medical, but we have to see how the industry progresses. And as a result of that, then we can start legislating to make sure that we perfect the industry. You know, we've, we've seen what's happened in other states, Colorado, California. California's had the industry for decades now. We look to them to see the mistakes that they've made and see how we can create an environment where we avoid those mistakes and have a a, a better industry than most other states. And I have confidence that, that the board will do the right thing. But look, even if you have regulations within the industry, regulations are not permanent. You need legislation. And so that's why, for example, the MRT has a provision in there that allows them to deal with packaging of edible products. However, we recently read something in, uh, I believe it was in the New York Times, that indicated that there were children that were being rushed to the emergency room because they confused a cannabis gummy with a child's gummy, even though the regulation is there. So at any point, the MRT can say, we don't want that regulation anymore. But to me, it was important to make sure that this becomes the law, that Now, if you have counterfeit products, they have to be childproof. You know, that was something that obviously the MRTA envisioned, but I want to make sure that it becomes law so that I don't have kids in my community, you know, young 10, 11 year old children being rushed to the emergency because they consumed an edible product. Are you content with the rollout of rules and regulations stemming from the MRTA back in 2021? Do you think the last two years have been going okay? Well, I have to see first how how the industry continues to develop. You know, the social equity component there wasn't uh, funding to provide loans to these entrepreneurs that either were arrested or suffered a marijuana conviction. We didn't set aside funding to give them low interest loans. So that makes it very difficult. I don't know how much preparation they're getting to run a business because this industry is paper heavy. There are a lot of requirements and rules and regulations they have to follow to get the license. And then to run a business, you know, you could have sold (laughs) <laughs> dime bags in a corner. Now to run an actual business is a whole different concept. Uh, you have to pay taxes. You have to file records. I don't know how much help we've given to those that apply under the sec- social equity component. But I also believe that no matter what happens now, ultimately, the billionaire marijuana companies are going to come in in about five years and gobble up everyone else. Well, we've been speaking with State Senator Luis Sepulveda. He is a Bronx Democrat. Senator, thank you so much for making the time. Thank you for inviting me. Support for Capital Press Room provided by the William G. Pomeroy Foundation. Communities across the Empire State have stories to tell. A roadside marker funded by the William G. Pomeroy Foundation can help your town or city educate the public, encourage pride of place, and promote local tourism. More about the Pomeroy Foundation's New York State Historic Marker Grant Program for 501c3 organizations, nonprofit academic institutions, and local state and federal government entities at wgpfoundation.org.